Welcome in, everybody, to another episode of The Take. I'm your host, Jackson Burleson, of course. In today's episode, I've got a very special guest. Mike Zanetti is finally on the pod, seven weeks overdue. We are supposed to do it for week one, but welcome yeah, in. Very overdue, but it's, it's happy to be here. Finally, week seven, we'll talk some football. Let's go. And he uh, also has a football channel, so that's kind of one of, part of the reason why I had him on. He does a bunch of fantasy stuff. Uh, I've been seeing your your reels and stuff. You, hopefully you have some fantasy advice for some of the members in the audience today. We'll see. Of course. Yeah. I have any questions you want to throw at me? I'm down for anything. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going I'm to I'm throw a question at you All right. to start this one. Let's so go. Devontae Adams is now a jet. Yes, he is. He is a New York jet. We knew it was going to happen. One. Mm -hmm. They gave up what was it, like a third round pick that can turn into a second if he's like a first or second team all pro if he goes to the AFC Championship or the Super Bowl. What? Which. It, was, it was like a fourth and then it could turn into a second with playing time. <laughs> but it's like now look at this offense. Garrett Wilson moves to like the slot. That's going to kill fantasy owners. You drafted Wilson thinking he was going to be the number one target for Rodgers. And now they're bringing in Devontae Adams. So that's just crazy stuff. How does that transform the Jets' offense? Because they've kind of needed an answer in a lot of areas. I mean, not non-fantasy. It, it's huge for the Jets because they need to be contenders. And they're 2-4 and four, almost halfway through the 2-4. and four. It's like bad record. So you look at the Jets, it's like they needed Adams because Rodgers could not find a target. It's like it was so bad because you look at – he was trying to like throw all these back shoulder passes and Lazard was helping. He had Lazard, but like Wilson and him never were on the same page. And if it's taken seven, six, seven weeks to get to that point, you, Adams, I love it, but can they answer? That's the whole question. Is it just me or do the back shoulder passes seem like too much sometimes? Like, I feel like Rogers does a little too much back there. Yeah. I don't know if he's, and he's old. He he needs to know his body too. Like, and he's limping around. Like, he looks beat up every single week. And it's the thing with Rodgers. It's like every post com press conference I, I see. It's like he's like, even last week with the first the Bills, like the interception. He's like, yeah, Mike Williams ran down the seam. He was on the red line. And I saw that clip and I was like, dude. Can you just accept the fact that it was not the best ball and it was it was not Mike Williams' fault? I, I don't know. He did it's, underthrow it. He did it, underthrow it. Was, it. Especially it was, the one last night. Yeah. Well, first of all, the officiating, it was, it was there's so many penalties. To be <laughs> there's a lot. Like, I was, every game, like, the referee had more screen time than Aaron Rodgers. It was, like, crazy. But overall, I think this move will definitely help the Jets. It's just the connection with, with Adams that's the biggest factor and – I think he's going to feed him, but it's also going to help Garrett Wilson to where they can't double Wilson anymore. Yeah, that's and true. And if you decide to double Adams, Wilson's going to be over the slot because he's just a great route runner. And then Lazard is also his good target. So yeah, I, Lazard's I, a good player as well. They got they got weapons. Got I mean, they have players. That, but does this move make him a Super Bowl contender, though, like yeah. the way they've been playing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like Tom Brady and the Bucks run is kind of – obviously, it's not similar because I feel like – this offense looked 10 times worse than the Bucs. But you look at how they bounced back and then went to the Super Bowl, won the Super Bowl. Can that be something Aaron Rodgers does with potentially getting Devontae Adams and bouncing back? And obviously the struggle is midseason. Can they bounce back, sneak into the wild card, and then go on a run? I think you're also right to say that it's kind of similar to the Bucs because on paper it kind of is. They have an old quarterback. They have a good running back. Right. So they have all the pieces they need, and they have a good defense. I mean, they have everything they need. There's I no question about the it. The Jets' defense looked bad against the <laughs> I don't know if that's like head coach. Like, you, you fire Sala. Is Jeff Ulbrich like... But he's still a defensive coach. I, I mean, love he, Ulbrich. He was the defensive coordinator. I, I think he brings a lot of firepower to the team, but it's like, did he have to control too much in managing the defense and the offense and the whole team? I mean, that didn't look good, but the Jets' defense kept plays like that. They're not doing anything. No, no. But that's that's what surprised me, though. It's, right. They should turn around. I mean, I was thinking Devontae Adams would either go to the Saints, which that kind of quickly went away when Derek Carr got hurt. A sneaky, I thought the Bills might be in the run, and it would have been great for Adams, but I feel like – or Allen, excuse me. But, like, the Jets – 
they needed a receiver. And I, <laughs> I heard, I heard, I heard Bills, I heard Chiefs. I'm like, the Jets make the most sense. It's it's Rogers Adams. Why wouldn't you want to go to New York? Right, so. right. There's, I feel like it was a no brainer to get those two back in bed together and playing together. And it was, it's whole, it's so weird still how that whole situation ended. You know, Devonte got traded, and then Aaron Rodgers ended up leaving. It was, and now they're back together, but. Yeah, let's see. The Jets, the Jets are always a cursed franchise, so I don't know if this is going to help them out, but it's definitely not going to hurt them. Same old Jets, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I feel like it was funny because you saw the tweet, oh, Rodgers goes to New York, and then 15 minutes later, Rodgers is in New Jersey. So it's like <laughs> crazy. <laughs> but, um, oh, that, that just broke today, so I, yes. I'm kind of glad we got to talk about that. But Something I'm not really glad to talk about. Oh boy. And before I get into my Dallas Cowboys and absolutely just shred this entire organization, let's hear this clown of an owner, Jerry Jones, here. Let's let's see what he had to say on the 105.3 fan, the Dallas Cow the Dallas radio station that he speaks on every week. And He's not taking any accountability. I'll, I'll, I'll say that. So I'm, I got to play this for you guys right now. This is not your job. Your job isn't to let me go over all the reasons that I did something, and I'm sorry that I did it. That's not your job. Well, my job it's, is to so ask why. Well, job, or I'll get another. I'll get somebody else to ask these questions, man. Uh, <laughs> Jerry, we're just we're we're we're, we're trying to figure out why no, the team no, is. I'm not. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. You. You're not going to figure out it's uh, what the team is doing right or wrong. If you are, uh, or any five or ten like you, you need to come to this meeting I'm going to today. There are 32 teams here. You're geniuses. <laughs> Jerry, okay. it, it, y'all really think you're going to sit here with a microphone and tell me uh, uh, all of the things that uh, I've done wrong and without going over the right? Okay. Do I really have to? This guy might be delusional. I'm sorry, but Jerry Jones, it's like every year. It's supposed to be the Cowboys year, and I know this, <laughs> not I know, this year. Oh, I don't understand. Like the off, <laughs> the off season, the Cowboys lose a lot. We didn't do anything, and then Jerry's like, we're "Let's better. go all in." And then he said on Stephen A. Smith's interview, "We're a better team now." <laughs> Dude, how about that? This Cowboys? is the worst home, bro. This is the worst home loss since 1988. Forty-seven to nine. We are the only team this week to not score a touchdown. Like, are you kidding me? And then Dak Prescott had an 11.4 quarterback rating, which was worse than Daniel Jones. That oh, is God. a disgrace. And we just paid him $60 million. I can't believe we gave him the biggest contract in NFL history. We know what he is. In the last four home games, we've given up 167 points. That is... Literally the worst in NFL history since 1972, going back to the Oilers. Oh. And Jerry has the audacity to say, you have no right as media to say what the problem is. We know what the problem is. We can't run the football. We can't protect the passer. We cannot stop the run. And we cannot stop the pass. We can't do anything besides kick field goals. That is the only thing that we've been able to do. And he says, well, you can't determine what's right or wrong. Well, maybe you are the one that's confused here. Because how many times have you watched this team lose four home games in a row? You, you, you've been at every game, so it's not, there's nothing confusing here. Like that's, that's what I'm not understanding. It I, doesn't make sense. And also oh, in the yeah. red zone, we suck. We suck in the red zone, dude. We're 30th in touchdown percentage in the NFL. And we're th last in giveaways. Last. Dead last. In the league. I just, I don't understand <laughs> how at the beginning of the season, Jerry Jones is like, oh, we're going all in. This is the team. This, I'm so confident in this team. And then, like, the, just, I understand you, you need to have confidence in your team. But at the same time, this roster was never built to be a contender. It never was. <laughs> no. You lost Pollard. You lost Tyron Smith. You lost. We lost Debye, who's our center on the Commanders yeah. now, and we lost Dorrance Armstrong, who is one of our best you, pass rushers. You as got well. worse, and you wanted to act like you got better. And I love the confidence there, but you have to be realistic, and you got to stop living in a fantasy world of oh, well, this is the year we're going. Stop it. 
And then, and then with the media, I understand why you get so frustrated, but you have to get better. You have to figure out what the problem is. And honestly, I think a potential firing could be in play. But apparently Jerry said he hasn't even given a thought about that. I <laughs> no, He I was don't literally know. asked about that after the game. And he's, he's like, oh, so you have you thought about uh, firing the head coach? And then someone, like, was questioning him, saying, like, he was, like, saying I'm not an idiot or something like that, which, you, by the way, you are. <laughs> So I, I don't want to hear this nonsense. This is this is absolute garbage. Like, why did I even watch this year? I literally said I wasn't going to, and I ended up watching. How, how's this possible? We're zero and three at home, and then we're three and zero on the road. I mean, how does that make any sense, dude? I mean, <laughs> and the teams we've beaten are not great. I mean, we beat the Giants, we beat the Browns, who are by the way one of the worst teams in football, and then. We beat the Steelers. And, yeah, was that a good defense? Yes, but we didn't score a touchdown until the second half. I just think it's even crazier how they actually have a chance to make the playoffs. Because, <laughs> and I say that, like, they're one game back. And the Packers are probably going to – I don't know who's going to get in. But, like, the NFC arguably might be better than the AFC this year. I don't know why, but – there's a lot of good teams. The, the Vikings are coming out rolling. The Packers look like good football back with Jordan Love. The Cowboys are on the edge. The Commanders look like they might win the division with how bad the Eagles and Cowboys have been. Yeah, it's I been mean, a crazy year, and you don't even... And you're mentioning all those teams. We just played the Lions. We're nowhere, nowhere near, near the Lions. That they, level. And we, we were still not able to put any points on the board, even with Aiden Hutchinson now. I mean, that just shows you right there. We're not a playoff football team. We are not. And I said this before the season started. Dallas Cowboys will not make the postseason. We have one of the toughest schedules in the NFL. Dude, after the bye, we play San Francisco on Sunday Night Football at San oh Francisco. Boy. That is going to be an absolute murder scene. And then we play the Falcons, Eagles. I'm not sure the exact order, but we have a tough schedule. And Texans. Texans are in there as well. So we, the schedule's not getting any easier. And I'm pretty sure we play Washington in some at some point in the in the next five games. So yeah, it's a it's a disgrace, man. I mean, we were, <laughs> dude. It, Hutchinson getting hurt really hurts the Lions. How does that impact the Lions' Super Bowl chances? You think? Uh, apparently, he said that he would be back if the Lions were to get to a Super Bowl. But really, a tibia. I don't know about that. Uh, that's that's it, a season ending. It was ending. a very ugly injury, and I thought it was potentially like because when he got, when he went down, he had his like he pulled his hands. I thought it was like a maybe a nervous. Yeah, that's then I, I watched the replay, and I'm like, oh, that's what happened. So his leg, you know, that was a very. Gr I understand why they didn't show the replay now, but with the Lions, Hutchinson probably one of the best up there with T.J. Watt, Miles Garrett. Probably could have won Defensive Player of the Year. Yeah, and he's on that level with Bosa and Mike Crosby, a guy who can just 100%. take over a game. And like, now, you need that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now do you go get Max Crosby, potentially, and maybe fill that void for now? I don't know. Raiders are going to trade Max Crosby? Maybe. I, I heard he's in the package deal with Adams. I, I, I don't know what, what, what they're going to do with Max. I feel like Crosby now, he's like, I don't, I don't. I don't know. Last year, he was like, all right, if the coach doesn't come back, I'm not going to come back. And now he comes back, and he's like, oh, I might go somewhere. So I, the whole rumors there is crazy. But back to the Lions with Aiden Hutchinson, their offense is still their offense. Obviously, their defensive line is going to miss Aiden Hutchinson. But I don't think it's so far stretched that they can't make a Super Bowl run without him. Yeah, I don't. That's where I push back because without Hutchinson, I just don't think they have that guy who can just go make a play. Like they sure. don't have that. Like I was listening to um, NFL Network uh, Sunday night, and uh, Steve Smith put it put it pretty well. He's like, "Well, they don't have that that guy who can deliver a spark whenever you need it." And I feel like with 49ers, they still got Bosa. Like even with the Cowboys, when Parsons comes back, I mean, I'm not saying he's gonna be a game changer by any means, but like. You need players like that that can just make a play when no one else can't and do the spectacular when no one else can't, especially in the playoffs. Like, you have to have that. And the way this division is panning out, which we'll get into this division oh in a little bit, but it, it's it's going to be tough. And the Lions are still a good team, like you mentioned, offense and everything like that. But defensively, without Hutchinson, I just don't see this Lions team 
making it to the Super Bowl. It's, it's definitely going to be a struggle. And the first few weeks for the Lions, they did not look like the team that they were last year. So I, I question if they can even, obviously now they look like they settled down, but if they continue <laughs> They did more than just that. If they, well, they killed the Cowboys. They didn't just kill us. They knocked just, them dead. They had Jerry Jones salty on, on a radio show. and but, You know, uh, come to this yeah, meeting, you know. I, I think Jerry Goff is, is back, and uh, the Montgomery contract extension, he wanted to play well. I don't know what happened to the Lions or if the Cowboys are just that bad, but they looked good. And if they continue to play like that, I don't really care how the defense plays. He's, with Aiden Hutchinson out, the Cowboys still couldn't do anything. And I don't know if that says anything, but obviously, yes, you miss a game record on defense with that X factor of Aiden yeah, Hutchinson. Yeah. So you miss an... It, he it's led, gonna, he's leading the league in sacks, right. too. It's going to be an impact, for sure. Like, how do you bounce back from that? It's, you don't. But I don't... It, but. We don't think the Lions are screwed, though. No, like, uh, that's the thing. Not. Like, it, it definitely impacts their chances to win the whole thing, but they are still a Super Bowl contender. Correct. That's the bottom line. Um, let's talk about two teams that I think are Super Bowl contenders: uh, Washington Commanders and the Baltimore Ravens. That was a that was a pretty interesting game. I'll, I'll say that. I mean, Lamar Jackson to me is he's been a problem. He's been looking better as a passer. He's been progressing as a passer the way I want to see it. He's in the pocket making plays. I mean, nine of his completions were to Zay Flowers. I mean, those two guys are... I have to ask you, Going talking about the Ravens, do you think Lamar Jackson should have won MVP last year? Um, I don't. I don't either. And I think he's playing better this no, year. No, he is. I, maybe arguably the best in his career. Obviously, probably... Probably second best year because his 2017 MVP season was pretty great. But the injuries last year with Andrews and Bateman, now you get those guys back. And then the addition of Derrick Henry yeah. is just, it puts so much into this offense because the Ravens have been a run first team. Gus Edwards had double digit touchdowns last year. So you bring in a guy like Henry who was expected to get the work. That opens up a lot for Lamar Jackson because now you got to stop an absolute freight train in the backfield, and then he fakes that, and then he can either fake it, the linebackers bite, and then he's got Flowers, Bateman for so it, the run game with Henry opens up so much for that offense. Yeah, it does. It does. And that's lot. why Lamar is looking so much better because he can run it, he can throw it, and because the run opens up the pass, and, and, and everybody knows that. And and Derrick Henry, he's been. On an historic pace. I mean, he's got 20 100-yard games with two touchdowns. I mean, that's behind Emmett Smith with 21, Jim Brown, and a couple other guys. So he's in elite company. I mean, he's definitely – I think he's creeping up in, like, one of the best running backs I ever agree. conversation. I mean, I would probably say that. When I look at Derrick Henry right now, last year on the Titans, I was like – Ah, he looked a little slow. He looked like he lost a step. I'm not saying he wasn't good. He was pretty great. But, you know, that short running back career, you're like, okay, does Henry start to slow down on the Ravens? That was my question. And then he goes to the Ravens, and he looked like he got better. <laughs> yeah, he looks like he's faster. He looks like he's back right. to normal, and he's he's mowing people over, which, if, thank you, Derek Henry. You've been absolutely <laughs> amazing on my fantasy team this season. You've been killing great. it. But, like, if this guy continues <laughs> to have, like, 22-mile-per-hour runs and he's just – I don't understand how to explain it, but, like, he's approaching the 30-year-old mark, and that is not where a running back succeeds normally. Like, you don't have that longevity. Like, Frank Gore was a guy who was always on the field. Right. Adrian Peterson, as much as he wanted to play until he was, like, 40, he was never really any great after he left the Vikings. So, um you look at Derrick Henry, if he continues the 1,000-yard seasons up next three, four years on the Ravens. He's in the conversation. I think there's no doubt he definitely is the guy. I think right now for me, my goat is AP just because of how great his prime was. But when you talk about the longevity of running backs, I think Frank Gore is probably top six, top five area. I don't know how you feel about that. I, I mean, I think Emmitt Smith is the greatest runner. I love back. Emmitt. I mean, all-time uh, leading Barry. rusher, all-time rushing touchdown leader. I mean, I'll take that. Emmitt's great. He, he's, his career was so long as well with the Cowboys and the great offensive line. Um, but, yeah, Emmitt's up there. You have so many great running backs. But I think Henry could top them all just because – a thousand yard after a thousand yard after a thousand yard after a thousand yard. That's basically he's he might catch Emmett's record, which I never thought was possible, but that could be a possibility. This guy continues to 
these numbers are Dude, crazy. He's the man. he's the first player since 2005, the Danian Thompson, to score a rushing touchdown in each of his first six games. Incredible. That's nuts. You were talking about Ladanian here, who's, who's also in the in the conversation as well. But mm-hmm. who, who? Let me ask you this: Who has a better chance to win MVP this year, Jaden oh. Daniels or Lamar Jackson? Uh, I, I love the way Lamar's playing, but I feel like the MVP of that team is Henry right now. And I don't want to discount Lamar because he's playing unreal, but Henry has taken that team over on offense, and I, I think it's. It's tough for me to say that a quarterback isn't going to win the MVP because obviously it's a quarterback-driven award. But the way Jay Daniels is playing, I'm surprised Sam Darnold's not a candidate. Right now, I'm really irritated that Patrick Mahomes is getting all these favorites. And yes, the Chiefs are... And he's not playing that well. Right. Like, the Chiefs are, what, 5-0 and on the bye? I mean, they're still undefeated. Right. But but they haven't been lighting it up. But but the reason for that is because they haven't been playing behind. Like, when you play mm -hmm. behind, you got to throw the ball more. And when you are playing ahead, you get to run the football, establish the run game. I know this is off topic, but Patrick Mahomes is arguably playing the worst in his career right now. I would say arguably. But you can't put him as the MVP conversation when he's playing just as good as any other quarterback. I think Joe Burrow is playing better than him. Granted, he's not 5-0, and but that 5-0 and doesn't mean you're the MVP of your team just because you're a quarterback. Like, I think Sam Darnold's playing 10 times better just in that offense with Kevin O'Connell. Kevin O'Connell's a, he's an offensive genius. Um, yeah, there's a lot. There's still a lot going on with the year. I, I feel like this season has been very strange, but um, let's get into the play of the week. Because right. we got a pretty action-packed play of the week here. Yes. Uh, Monday Night Football. This is where it's from. I'm, I'm sure you guys have an idea what this is, but we'll play it right now. Here we go. Up into the air. Into the end zone. And incomplete. Lazard had a shot. And now the other official saying touchdown. One said incomplete. The other says touchdown. And now the officials get together. Watch Lazard 10. He's got it. The ruling on the field is a touchdown. Good call. Touchdown Jets. That's a great call. He definitely had it. He didn't even have to go up and high point it. You can see he doesn't totally get up in the air with all the bodies there, but he's got it. That's a touchdown right there. And then it comes out. So. Woo. Oh, man. That was uh, that was quite a play. Uh, it was- by the way, that was Aaron Rodgers' fourth successful Hail Mary since 2008. I, I still have no words. Like, <laughs> in that game, before half, t- first of all, I, I know people that turned the game off because they thought they were going to knee it. And I was like, okay, they have a timeout. But the whole point was, you look at the broadcast, they're like, oh, yeah, let's show the other Hail Marys that Rodgers, look what Rodgers has done the other three times. I just, watching it, I was like, there's no way. There's no way. And I'm just like, <laughs> how does this guy continually just throw these Hail Marys like it's like practice? It's just like the rainbow from out of nowhere. It, it does <laughs> help when there's only two guys rushing, though. <laughs> I swear it's how he arcs it, man. Like, And the Bills, no offense to the Bills, but, man, they, they played prevent. That, I, don't, I don't like it. But, um, and no, it was a helmet catch, too. <laughs> I just, every time <laughs> he's on the 50-yard line, it's either Jeff Janis, Randall Cobb, Alan Lazard, or anybody. <laughs> Richard <laughs> Rodgers. I, I don't understand how the guy does it, but it, it's incredible to watch, and it was such a great play. It, w- it, was, it was definitely a great play. <laughs> no, no quarterbacks have Hail Marys like, like Rodgers. It's just, that's just a fact. And he's du- he doubles quarterbacks and completed Hail Mary passes for his career, so. That's awesome. Yeah, there's that. But um, the Bears, oh, boy. man. Hey, I said the Chicago Bears, the beginning of the season, we're going to win the NFC North. Does that look crazy now? No, because they're 4-2, and two, and they're coming off 30-point games back-to-back. That is different. I just... I- I'm going to give credit to where credit's due, right? Okay, Caleb Williams played unbelievable, but they beat the Jaguars. 
Let's be honest. The Jaguars are probably one of the worst defenses but in the league. But it still means something to me because it's their first three-game winning streak since 2020. So, like, they are ha- they obviously, like, are a good football team. Like, defensively, they're one of the best teams in the league. Offensively, they're starting to figure it out. Caleb Williams looks poised in the pocket. He's doing his thing. Also, I'll just say this. DeAndre Swift, he's looked better as a runner in these last couple games. Yeah, I feel like you have to um, look at the fact that this team was not good to begin with. Uh, breaking news as we're doing this, by the way, Amari Cooper goes to the Bills. Amari Cooper's Live. on the Bills. Amari Cooper traded Ooh. to the Bills. I think we should. You want to do? Ooh, whoa. Hold live, on, hold on, hold on. We'll, ta- we'll come back to the Bears. Okay. We'll come back to the Bears. Okay. Live breaking news, by the way. What was the? Uh, what were they giving up on the, um, on the Maury trade? Amari Cooper, the say? Bears. It is uh, just a blockbuster trade right now. Wow! It's, look at that! Look at that! We so. got a we got a live trade here. We got a live <laughs> trade. We'll put the graphic up. But uh, awesome, awesome. That awesome. is huge for I the Bills, that. though, I because they need a wide receiver. <laughs> yeah. Keon Coleman obviously <laughs> is not ready for this league. I don't know. He hasn't been showing up at practice in the film. I don't know. That's why he got benched the one week when he only had that one catch for a touchdown versus the Jets. I think Keon's fine. From I, a, from an FSU fan, I think he's okay. Un- I, he's a good player. He's just young. Right. I like Keon. But bringing in Amari, who's a veteran, who is visibly frustrated with this Browns team, you bring him on the on the Bills, great route runner. This could be a great connection, and I I know it's, it's. I think it will be because I I we've seen Amari Cooper. He hasn't really had the quarterback play he's needed to like hit his peak potential. Like in Dallas with Dak, I feel like those guys were just always out of sync. They were on the same page. Like Dak was throwing the ball behind Amari or not hitting him right on target where he wants to be. Same with Deshaun Watson, which was a little bit worse, honestly, probably way worse. I mean, he, Deshaun Watson's arguably been one of the worst quarterbacks in the league this year. And for him to get out of there, I mean, I think it's a good move. And this is definitely the best quarterback he's ever played with in Josh Allen. And for the Bills, I mean, they got a huge win last night, barely escaped. Uh, yeah, they definitely. And now they're got upgrading, which is huge. I mean, that offense, I feel like. Outside of James Cook, who didn't play last night, which was that's a big plus for them to win without him. But they needed a spark on offense, and Amari Cooper is going to bring that. He's he has great route tree. He has some of the best hands in the league. He's very underrated. The Bills are four and two. They have had not a great. Josh Allen's throwing the ball to every receiver. He's throwing it to Keon. He's throwing it to Curtis Samuel. He's throwing it to Shakir. He's throwing it to Kincaid. He doesn't have a number one target. So you bring in Amari Cooper. With a four and two team already, like they, that's momentum. They needed a receiver, and they traded back in the draft. Got Keon with the first pick in the second round, which they thought was going to be the answer. Hey, he's going to be our number one deep threat, and he'll be better with Amari Cooper on the on the outside. Now, I think that, that, that there's no doubt about that. that. That's a big trade. I'm actually happy for Amari because when the Cowboys traded him, I was too bad. Amari's been bouncing around a lot. I mean, he got traded from the Raiders. Raiders, traded from the Cowboys, traded from the Browns. I mean, that's a pretty weird career for a receiver at his caliber, I would say. I just, wow, man, I love that trade for the Bills. It's a great trade. I'd probably give that trade Brian, an A+, plus, honestly. I mean, I'm, same thing with Adams, too. I mean, both those guys needed to leave, and man. <laughs> they go to teams with quarterbacks that are great, and then talk about the duo with Adams. To talk about the AFC Adams. East now. Wow. I mean, it kind of got loaded with the receivers very quickly. All of a sudden. I mean, now it's just a, it's a run between the Jets and Bills. Jets are two games back in the division. Now they got a loss in the division to the, the Bills. So it's it's definitely tough. They're 2-2 two and two in the division. Or they're 1-2 they're and two in the... Where are they? They're 2-2 two and two in the division. Or the conference. 1-1 one one in the division. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's so many numbers next to these links. Anyway, the Jets are... I don't know if they catch the Bills. Probably not. I don't know. I think the, they look the Bills have had that division on lock for... Quite a while. I would I would say so, Quite too. Quite a while. I didn't expect them to be as good as they are. I expect the Jets to be better, honestly. It wasn't a lot. What about Josh Allen? Is he still an MVP candidate? I would say so. Hey, look, the guy's got zero interceptions through six weeks of football. Like, that's incredible. But And he's known to turn over the ball a 100%. lot. hundred percent. Yeah, he's definitely protecting the ball a lot more. And without a number one receiver, he's not just forced forcing the ball in the coverage he is looking at who's open and i'm surprised that the jets weren't able to make him make a mistake um looking at the bills though 
it's not that I expected them to take a step back because, like, everyone likes to say, oh, they're defense, they lost defense, and they're not the team that they were. Okay, but it's still Josh Allen. And I, I didn't, still again, a top three quarterback the, in the game. Right. So like. The only reason I thought the Jets might leap them in the division is because they would be arguably a better football team. That's the probably they're not playing like a top three defense. <laughs> they have one, but they're not playing like it. And then Rodgers is not finding chemistry. Maybe Adams coming now will help that'll, out. I think that'll happen immediately, but in my opinion. I think both those teams are in the playoffs, guaranteed, come end of the season. And I think it's tough to say for the Jets, but... I think the Jets, I, think I mean, they, they upgraded. They, they have to sneak in. They upgraded. So, yeah. I mean, they could be a wild card team. I don't think they're going to the division. I believe but. it. I believe it. That's a crazy breaking news. That's oh, wow. that's big. That's big. Yes. The wide receiver uh, <laughs> market has been going crazy today in the trades and stuff. Very um, much. But we'll go back to the Bears. Uh, before we get into um, our thoughts about the Bears destroying the Jags, I do want to play a soundbite I got from uh, okay. Matt Eberflus because Caleb Williams, he's been just sensational, dude. He's uh, he's strong. He's he's a strong player in the pocket, and he's strong, in, you know, in the open field. And so he's got ability to, uh, you know, you know, square you up. Okay, and then be able to capture edges and also be able to escape and be strong enough to be able to escape when people do have him in the grasp. So um, he's he's a hard get, and uh, and he's uh, he's done a good job of that so far. Yeah, bro. I mean, Caleb. I think Caleb is living up to what he is supposed to be. I think this year he had a slow start, obviously, as any rookie quarterback will. I mean, even Jane Daniels had a first slow start in his uh, debut. Enough. So I mean. Caleb Williams, I, I think he's obviously showcasing that he can make plays. He can extend plays. His pocket presence is insane. He's already better than a lot of quarterbacks right now, just of what he's doing with this offense and the weapons where, he has. Where would you put him right now? Top 10? Um, I mean, he's definitely better than Dak Prescott. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know exactly where I'd put him. I mean, he's definitely top 15. I mean, without a question. Without even thinking about it, I think he's top 15. I love what Caleb's been able to do with the adversity through the two weeks, and then he just bounces back and continues to improve every week. He's been doing really well. But I'd like to pump the brakes for a second because I'm, let's, I really want to showcase the fact that he had some amazing games versus probably terrible defenses. And I'm not saying that to knock Caleb, but like I feel like the hype is here when they played the Jaguars and they, you know, fumble at the start of the third quarter. And well, I, they had a rough start. I hate to, like, I'm not bad-mouthing, but, like, it's just, like, I want to mention what is obvious right now. They beat the Tennessee Titans. They beat the L.A. Rams, who have been arguably be bad. They beat the Panthers. They beat the Jaguars. Now they go into their bye week on their high horse. And then they got the commanders two. next. We'll see what the Bears are really made. But that's not a good defense either. No, so like, but uh, the Bears ride off their defense. And right now... The fact that Caleb Williams is able to do what he can to win games, that's all you can ask for. Now, do they go 10 and 7 and, and make the playoffs? Who knows? I think 10 wins is a very reasonable expectation now. I thought my prediction personally for the Bears was 8 and 9, just because I didn't know what to expect from a rookie quarterback. I don't think they win the division just because. I, I, I said that. That's what I said at the beginning I, of the year. I like the look both. at it. I, I mean, this I, has I, never happened before. We have. In, the, in one division, through six weeks, we've got four, yeah. four win teams that have four more wins. So, like, that's never happened before. I think, arguably, that could be the first ever division that gets every team in the playoffs. That'd be crazy. You got the Vikings, Bears, Lions, and, and, Packers. and Packers. So, that'd be pretty sensational. Um, but, again, the Bears' defense is what's going to make this team what it is. They may... Sneak in, they might get for. I don't know. So what's you think happen. it's the schedule that's been helping I them feel early like, on? Again, Kale has been getting better, but I feel like it's a little bit overshadowed for who they've played. And it again, it's not to like knock anything of what he's doing, but it is probably the worst defenses in the league versus the Panthers, the Rams, the Jaguars, like the Colts. But like, you're not going to take to account as they've had five offensive touchdowns in consecutive games for the first time since right, 1956, I bro. I can, this bears offense is making history just in general with what I, they've been doing. I will say this. They may sneak into the playoffs, but that doesn't make them a playoff team. That makes sense. I think they're a playoff team. I mean, look at that offense. <sighs> 
Look I, at that offense. Look at that defense. I just, I mean, on paper, hmm. I, I'm a big on paper guy, and that's why Fair I was enough. high on the Bears to start the season. And now look what they're doing. I mean, they're four and two. No one thought they're going to be four and two. I Nobody. Didn't. I mean, except me. I, 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 I predicted them to be four and two at this point. Right. I've been, I'm just, I'm just saying. Right. I, I think I've been pretty spot on so far. But you wanna, the rest of their schedule, you want to play a game? We'll determine. You want to play a game? All right. Okay. Let's, okay. What is, what is it? Four and two. The Bears going to their bye week. Let's. I'm going to name the teams of their schedule. Okay. And you tell me the wins, and I'll tell you what the record is by the end of the year. And we'll determine if that's the playoff spot. Okay. All right. Okay. All okay. right. After the bye week, they go at the Commanders. They're going to win that game. They're going to win. Okay. The Commanders are arguably the best offense in the league, but, but they're going to win. I they're going to go win. into. I think. I think they'll win that game. They're going to go in there and they're going to win. Okay. So that's five wins. At the at the Cardinals. That's a dub. Okay. They go at home versus the Patriots. That's a dub. Versus the Packers. That's a dub. Versus the Vikings. They might. I think they're going to lose that one. Okay. Uh, okay. The Vikings. You said Vikings. Oh, right? Vikings. Okay. Lions. <laughs> um, I think they'll win that one. Without Hayden Hutchinson, I think they'll okay. win that one. At the Niners. Um, I'll say they lose that. Vikings again. They'll win that one. Lions again. They'll, 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 they'll split with okay. the Lions. Seattle. They'll win that one. And then the Bears. Or the, uh, or the, the Packers. I really can't read. Today. They will. They will go two and zero against the Packers. <laughs> they won't. They will. They will win both games against the okay. Packers. That's twelve wins that Jackson. And that's what I have. And yeah. at the beginning of the season, that's what I had them at. I just winning the division. Looking at all these games, most of them are division games, and all these all these teams are very competitive. So that's what's going to determine who wins this division, because um, any one of these teams can technically. With the way the records are going, it, they can win the division. I personally just don't think they've played anyone good yet. And this is where the test is going to be. Is Caleb Williams, obviously he's, he's going to be a great quarterback for years to come. But in his rookie year, is he going to face some adversity with the, obviously the commanders aren't a good defense. But when they play these teams, can they pull out the victory? This is where I get I think skeptical. they can. This I think where, they can. I like their I get... defense since it's been the backbone of them winning these games. Fair enough. I think it's also going to continue to be the backbone when they play these tougher teams that do have better offenses and can throw the football down the field. Cuz like the teams you mentioned, I mean the Rams, they they were injured so they didn't really get to see the full explosiveness of that offense. So I like I'll give you that, but I really think the Jaguars, even though they're so bad, they shouldn't be this bad. No. I mean, they have talent Trevor Lawrence, they gave him all this money, and he hasn't done nothing with it. But I mean, I, that has to be... I don't even know what to think about the Jaguars right now. I mean, they have the talent on paper, but they just have not been showing up. It's a funny thing, because like, they've lost both most, most of their games by one score. It's like three games now against the Texans, against the... well, Bro, they lost to the Dolphins, Browns. That's ugh. That is awful. Dolphins, and then, Browns, and Texans all by one score. Yeah, and then they it's lost just, the Bears, and yeah, I mean crucial mistakes. But they I mean, got blown out by the Bills on Monday Night Football. We all know how expected. that went. I think that's when everyone noticed. Like this, I the think they're. Off. I think they're genuinely bad. Yeah, but I don't even know what the Jacksonville goes does from here. Like, I, I really don't. It's a very bad problem with. I feel like the ownership is bad. No, it's not even Chad Khan just like... Well, he wants to be in London, so... It, I, don't, I don't even hate that. <laughs> it, it, the whole problem with the Jaguars is the fact that everyone needs to go. <laughs> Press Taylor's got to go. Doug Peterson's got to go. I don't even know who the def- defensive guy, but he got to go. The, the whole team, they cannot operate together. But what happened? Like, it, they were... It, is it I the skid even, from last year? Or, like, is it just carried over that much? I don't even want to hear hate on Trevor Lawrence right now because the guy is playing okay. He's not even playing that bad. Like, everyone's like, oh, my gosh, What Trevor. about the game he threw three interceptions against the Bills? Well, that was... That was a bad okay, game. Okay, okay. He was I, not I just, making good reads in that play. That, that's what fine. What was up with say. the non-platform throw? He's, like, leaning into okay. it. He had a clear pocket. Right. I've I, seen him not play well. Fair enough. But I just want to say last week, if you're going to knock Trevor for that game, I think that's terrible to say that because he actually threw some great passes and bounced back from the Bills game a few weeks ago, and receivers just dropped the ball, which is not good. But, like, it's little mistakes like that. Obviously, quarterback can't make the play every time. You would like to. But, like, I'd like to give Trevor the benefit of the doubt for the situation of what's transpired in Jacksonville. Obviously, he didn't deserve that contract. But at the same time, this has been a dumpster fire of just the way... 
Because last year they were supposed to be a playoff team. And, and then they and then they, they were one of the choked. best records in football, and then they just fell off a cliff. Yeah, I don't know what happened. So yeah. It's been, it wasn't injuries. No. They I, didn't get it's not like they got derailed by injuries or whatever. Well I, Trevor I, don't know. I will say Trevor was banged up. But like the, the whole point here is like I don't I really would like to say that Trevor Lawrence has never really had a number one wide receiver. Like Christian Kirk, okay. Calvin Ridley, all right. Uh, Gabe Davis is not he's not been anything crazy. So I feel like give Trevor Lawrence a guy like Mar- like say they drafted Marvin Harrison or say they got You don't think Brian to- Thomas can grow into that I love guy? I love Brian Thomas. He'll be he'll be the number one for a, a while, but I don't think he is yet because he's a mm. rookie. Like okay. he'll grow into that role. But obviously that's why they draft their wide receiver. But for me, if you had an, a veteran all pro wide receiver who's top ten in the league that would help this offense out 10 times over. Even in a Devontae Adams trade, that would make the Jaguars that much better because, and I feel like you're raging and enraging in, in, in what, what I'm saying, but I, I really don't think the Jaguars are that bad. I mean, they, they look, they're bad. They look bad. Listen, Who, who's, been, who's been worse, Cleveland or Jacksonville? I'd say Cleveland. Okay. Just because I, I their offense their offense is, is bad. It's like, anemic. <laughs> obviously, the Jaguars. Obviously, the Jaguars are probably one of the worst teams in the league. Which shouldn't have should not should be. not be that way. It should not. It's honestly the defense right now. Their their secondary is, is terrible. Um, but the whole problem with the Jaguars, I would say, is is the coaching. They have to fire everyone, clean house, and That's I feel like the move. I feel like every every fan. Everyone is saying trade Trevor Lawrence, but what is that going to do? <laughs> That's just going to—you have no quarterback now. What are you? What are you? No, gonna that do doesn't. Now? That so. doesn't. Uh, and you can't because no. <laughs> you invested all this money in him. Right. It's not like you can bench him. Like, it, let's say the guy went like, what's? It, let's say he goes one and seven, right? Okay. You still can't bench him. I mean, who are you going to put in there? Mac Jones? I mean, <laughs> come on. Like, what? What are we doing here? You 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 can't bench a guy. You're paying what fifty five million a season. But that like, is not a guy it, you can it, just put on the bench. I, I So as a Texans fan, Davis Mills before C.J. Stroud, right? I was like, okay, give the guy a chance. And <laughs> obviously that was not the right idea. Now Davis Mills is not Trevor Lawrence. But my point here is the Texans tried something different. And I'm all for it, right? They went to a veteran guy in Case Keenum. They're like, okay, Davis Mills is not the guy. Let's put in Case Keenum and see if he's got anything. And then it was Kyle Allen. And I'm like, okay, these guys are not even anything close to what Davis Mills has been doing. And then they continued to start for two weeks. And then I was like, okay, why is Dave? And this is where the, the Texans are probably one of the worst teams in the league. So it's like, it's funny that I'm even arguing this, but it's like, why is Davis Mills not the starter? He's not good, but he's the best they got. So it's like, do you bench Trevor? L- no, you don't bench Trevor Lawrence. No, and you like, can't put a veteran in there but because like, Mac Jones is not a, not right. a veteran. But I'm honestly <laughs> shocked that there's anybody still coaching on that team. No offense to Doug Peterson, but like he's been on the hot seat for a couple years now yeah. just because like you had that one playoff year where you beat the came back and really shouldn't have, but you beat the Chargers. <laughs> somehow, <laughs> somehow, somewhat, you no, beat that, the Chargers. You got, they definitely shouldn't have won that. Right. <laughs> they, de- they definitely shouldn't have. But yeah, they, I think Doug Peterson's definitely on the hot seat. I mean, there's only I'm just, there's only so much you can do with a coach fair enough. who has had a bad skid like he's had. And I think he's also lost the locker room. I mean, yes. they don't seem motivated to go out there Did and Did you perform. see the interview in London? I don't know who I it was. I, but I don't think I saw that. No. They were like, I, I don't remember what he said, but he was like something along the lines of, uh, yeah, we just don't look like we want to play. Is that? And then the reporter was like, is that a bad thing? He's like, no. What? I was How like, is that not? <laughs> that's what, How is that that's not what a I bad said. thing? That doesn't make any sense. How is that not a bad that's thing? That's what I said, but I saw it. That's I was like, dumb. How are you going to say? Like, obviously. What is that? Who I says think, something? I, who don't, says I have that? no idea who said it, but I saw it and I was like something little. I'm just like, that is the worst leadership in the locker room. And it go, all goes from the head coach. Like, look at the firing from Robert Sala. They fired him because he did not have a hold on the guys. And he was just this relaxed, chill let me, let me ask coach. you that. Let me ask you this. Who gets fired first? Mike McCarthy or Doug Peterson? That's a great question. I think they both should be fired today. <laughs> And I'm surprised that they haven't been. Like, this is, like, crazy. Like, 
I know we didn't expect the Cowboys to be anything crazy, and you can argue they're three and three, so maybe. I mean, it could maybe, be worse. Could maybe, be worse. Could be worse. Maybe they really should wait could. till the end of the season. But what does it hurt to fire the coach right now? The team's not doing anything. But who wants to come coach the Cowboys, or who wants to go coach the Jaguars? That's the problem. Good point. That's I mean, not. It's not appealing for a guy like Bill Belichick. And that's probably, oh, I'm going to come back out of retirement. That's probably the only reason why I can understand why the Jaguars haven't fired anyone because. Who are you going to fire? Doug Peterson, Press Taylor becomes the interim head coach? No. <laughs> Who are you gonna, you're going to fire Press Taylor and then Doug oh, Peterson? Oh, and then we're going to fire Mike McCarthy and Mike Zimmer's the interim head coach? Right. I mean, no, 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 So no, no, I think no, they'll probably, no. they shouldn't, but they'll probably wait till the end of the season and fire both of those guys. So it's just, it's, it's crazy because you could have arguably done it last year when they just, the season blew up in their face and they went on this terrible losing streak stretched to the end of the season, but... I'm surprised Again, they didn't do it during the off season, but we'll, we, we we'll went move on a on. while. Yeah, we went on a while, but the Jaguars. Oh man, I don't we'll, even. Know we'll where move. To start. We'll move on. Yes. Um, a quarterback who played really well in his rookie debut, uh, Drake May, arguably had the best rookie debut out of the first round quarterbacks for sure. He threw for the most yards. Yes, he had 243 yards passing, three touchdowns, two interceptions. But um, Gerard Mayo was actually not too upset with him. So we'll hear what he has to say real quickly. Could you be more specific well, not really. how, not, how, what you meant by that? Yeah, not, not really the coaching staff. Look, we're all, I mean, we feel like crap right now. And I would say just for a rookie quarterback to go out there and, and do some good things, you know, do some good things. I just felt like, you know, we could have did a better job supporting him. Better job supporting him. I mean, that's kind of tough, honestly. I think he played well. I, 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 do, I do think Drake May showcased his ability. I, I, I was really high on him in the draft. I think out of all the quarterbacks, like maybe you could argue this, but like I think he's going to be the best quarterback out of this entire draft. <laughs> I mean, I said that before the draft happened, and he's showing he can throw the football. He also can run. He has a good arm. He looked comfortable in the pocket, even though he got laid out a couple times. Uh, that the offensive line is just bad in New England right now. They've got a lot of issues. They have a lot of holes on that roster. So he's the one bright spot on that team at the current moment. And is he playing better than Caleb Williams? No. Is he playing better than Jane Daniels? No. Is he playing better than Bo Nix? No. But in the long-term scheme of things, I think the Patriots are going to develop him right, and I think he will be good in the long run. So I started laughing when you started talking about Drake May because – I don't know if you know where I stand on him, but I did not like the draft pick top three. Like, looking at Drake Man College, obviously the potential is amazing. And we'll, I'll get to how he played in a second, but my thoughts on him when he was drafted was the fact that it's an experiment, right? It, and we've seen so many of these experimental things before. Well, every that, rookie quarterback's an experiment, right. I feel like. It's just okay, whether it fair. works or not. But, like, for me, I feel like... Because you never know. I mean, the college game fair. is so different. That's fair. I just feel like there were major flaws in his game with with accuracy and just the inconsistent play of he had the big play and then he would miss it. It, it was just this back and forth for me. Like, he was this great prospect who should not... I don't think he was a first-round pick. And I say that only because I of, disagree. of how bad he was. He was... The greatness is the greatness, but the bad is very bad. Now, I'll talk about how he played. Okay. I thought that he would do what he did. And I'll, I say you that. You thought he would throw for 200 yards. I did. I did. I, I actually said that in the betting world, I did Drake made to throw for 164 and a touchdown. Only reason I say that is because Houston, and I'm a Texan fan, so I hate on our defense. <laughs> but at the same time, the guy played well. He may have thrown a couple interceptions, and he has that Josh Allen-esque last year to where he wants to make plays, and he throws these big passes. He had that deep play down the sideline to Keishon Booty. So uh, I definitely like what I'm seeing in his first start. I think I definitely – the only reason I don't like the pick is because top three to invest that much in a quarterback to start Jacoby Brissett, which I agree with, and now the team is just not as good. But he already threw for more touchdown passes than Brissett no. did in one game. So, I mean, I, I feel I mean, like he showed enough. Yeah, the Patriots yeah. aren't good, but, like – you have to give rookie quarterbacks no, time. Of I mean, even with Jaden Daniels, who's now an, an MVP candidate, he took a second. He yes. took one game, no, and then he got it rolling. Same Good. with Caleb Williams. He only threw for 93 yards. But how much does Ramondre Stevenson not playing in his debut, do you think, affected him? So starting out in the first quarter, watching Drake May, obviously there's going to be these slow 
things that he has to work out. First half, very bad. Um, they couldn't get the run game going. They couldn't move the ball past the sticks for the first two punts. And then in the, <laughs> in the second half, he played really well. At the end of the first half, he threw that touchdown to Booty. And um, it, it just it went from there. So for me, Drake May, as much as I didn't like the pink whatever, the, I'm not denying that he will be probably... I probably will be wrong. I, I mean, it's not like I didn't like the guy. It's the fact that I didn't know what to expect with... The flaws and the pluses. Is it because he's a North Carolina quarterback? Fair enough to say that because you look at <laughs> Sam Howell, you look at Mitchell Trubisky, you look at the product that has come out of North Carolina. But <laughs> no, he played good. Like obviously, like you said, he's not better than any of the other rookie quarterbacks. But the potential is there, and I like how they made the move midseason to let him develop a little bit and see what we can get out of the rest of the season. Maybe they can make some moves in the offseason. They probably got the most cap space in the league, if not up there. So you make a couple moves, go for some receivers, invest in some offensive line. I'm I'm not hating on the fact that this guy can be a potential playoff team in a few years. But at first, I didn't know what to expect considering the bad play in college. How was that going to translate to the NFL? That's what my biggest concern was when they drafted him because there was flaws in his game with accuracy and other things of playing consistent football. But the, the big upside plays we're there. So I'm not But saying, I also think you know, like what you're mentioning is things he's already gotten better at. Correct. I mean, we, we saw it in his debut. Right. I, like that's why they groomed him for a couple games. That's why they said, hey, we're not going to put you in the fire right away. Because right. honestly, if they started him right away, I probably wouldn't have been like feeling the way I am now. And when I say yeah. Drake May is going to be the best quarterback in this draft, I'm not saying this year. Like when all these guys' careers are over. Because he's got this like weird type of feel. He's got Phillip Rivers vibes to me. I don't know why, but he can sling the football. He can extend plays with his legs. There's a lot of things he can really do, and that's why I like his game. And in college, he was, like, one of the best quarterbacks when it came to scramble rate. So, like, there's that's one stat I really liked. And he had to adjust on the fly. I mean, North Carolina didn't have a great team. I will say that that is the one thing that will make him the greatest in this draft class is the fact that his mindset is so great. Like, after the draft, just wanting to improve and get better. And I was just skeptical because of what I've seen. And as much as I didn't think he was a top three pick, you could argue the upside. He looks like he's going to be a very good quarterback for years to come. And although I, I what I've said in the draft, I, I don't take that to heart. <laughs> At least, hopefully, you don't. <laughs> I don't. I mean, I'm not. it's not but, like I'm a North Carolina fan or anything <laughs> like that. I just, I just like the intangibles he brought like, in. The, the whole point was the fact that Again, you never know. Caleb Williams could have been a boss for all we know. But like, <laughs> that's what people were saying. Right. But like, <laughs> you have to look at the situation. What is going to happen? Like, in terms of his first start, the debut, it was good. Can we see more of that? We'll see. Like, I, I think we will see more. Of I, that. Lo- I love Drake, man. I, I mean, now I say that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> he's like, yeah, I don't like Drake, man. And then he's like, oh, I love Drake, man. Uh, it was the only. <laughs> I just, I, the only reason I say what I've said is the fact that I feel like everyone was putting him on this pedestal like he is the greatest quarterback of all time. And I'm just like, let's break it down to ground level. What has he done? What has he done? And that was my whole argument for why yeah. I didn't like how he was drafted so high. So that's that's basically the point of the argument. You know? Okay. Okay. All right. All right. We'll get in, let's get into our picks. Okay. J Beef's picks, were, the odds are courtesy of Hard Rock Bets. My pick, actually, All right. I'm sta- staying on the Patriots, actually. Oh, boy. Plus 200 versus the Jacksonville Jaguars. I don't hate it. I'm taking them. Uh, I, I just, I, I think Drake May can really carve up this Jacksonville defense in London. I really do. I wouldn't be surprised because the Jaguars, like we've said, one of the, <laughs> well, at least like I've said, I hate the Jaguars defense. They're not very good. Um, <laughs> they're just, they're just not. So, and um, I think they're motivated, like like Gerard Mayo said, I think they're motivated to back him up a little bit more and help him out more, especially when it comes to momentum. the game plan. They yeah. definitely have the momentum. And for what the the number is for plus 200, like that's that's pretty good odds, and I, I like the fact that that is the pick because I feel like it's a pick em. Jaguars stay in London. They kind of have to dive into film. Do they <laughs> Do they settle down? Do they have – does Foye Luokan come back? 
<laughs> does, does Drake? There's so many Im- implications, but I do like the fact that and if Ramondre Stevenson comes, both back, these we'll teams see. are very evenly matched. If not, the Patriots' defense is probably better. But the Jet, you know, Drake May is probably going to torture Jet. I like the pick. Uh, I think that one can go either way. What's your pick? For me, I, I like the fact that I like to go big games, and it is the Niners over the Chiefs to give them their first loss. Um, mm. I, I know mm. it's probably a, a pick 'em. But Chiefs coming off the bye, Niners coming off Thursday Night Football, Jordan Mason's a little banged up, Niners kind of trying to prove themselves. They haven't really found their lingo yet. After the Super Bowl hangover, they've kind of been like, they've half, been like eh. half, half asleep on offense. And they've also been injured, and they don't right. have McCaffrey, which really hurts. Right, so I, I just don't like how the Chiefs are playing. Maybe after the bye week, they show up. Um, but I do like that game. Another one, just it's it's a sneaky division game. I would not be surprised if the Browns beat the Bengals with Nick Chubb back just because they're at home. I know the Browns have been terrible, but if it, if anything looks weird enough, it is the AFC North and how that division goes. You don't think so? What's crazy is like, I feel like the Bengals have been figuring it out offensively, but then they looked bad against the Giants. (laughs) The only play they had was Joe Burrow running it for that crazy run, which came out of nowhere. I've never seen him do that. And then T. Higgins, you know, he was making some spectacular catches, but, I mean, he was kind of like, eh. Jamar Chase was just, you know, he's being Jamar Chase. But (laughs) I feel like the Bengals' defense is what was really hurting them at the beginning of the year, but... Now, against the Giants, they played better. I mean, it's against the Giants. But if they can play well against Cleveland and continue that momentum defensively they've had, I think they can be fine. And if Joe Burrow throws for, like, 200-plus yards or 300 or whatever, if he has a good day, three touchdowns, I mean, I don't see the Browns even even beating them because they don't have the firepower offensively. Now, if Nick Chubb can get going, that's a big if. Who's... Let, who, I don't Coming even off. know how he's going to be after that knee injury. I mean, he's ha- that's not the first time he's had a knee injury like that. We go back all the way to his Georgia days. We've seen him do that. And we both know he was the best running back when he went down. So, like, yes, we know what player the Browns are getting back. But I think it's going to be a feeling out process. And I think he's going to be a little bit rusty. And also Jerome Ford's still in there. So you can put – you can run a two running back set. Yeah, I just – I know how bad the Browns are, and I don't like how everyone before the season was like, Deshaun Watson's going to bounce back. I was like, this guy has not been... And I'm a Texan fan, so this guy has not been anything close to what he was on his season. Is he going to get in trouble this season? He shouldn't be even playing football. Is it, there's like another lawsuit that popped up, and he, then the, you remember if, the meeting with okay. the NFL or whatever they were showing. This like might the video be a, or whatever? This, this might be a stupid take, but if I was Deshaun Watson, <clears throat> I would just retire and collect my money. Because there's no reason he should be trying to prove anything. Because if he gets arrested, he doesn't get any of that money. True. True. I mean, he just retires and that's it. Hey, <laughs> I walk out 200 whatever million dollar man. <laughs> so, but Stefanski is so out I of think he needs to get fired. He has to, the, the whole po- It's week seven. We've seen nothing from the Browns. They've, they haven't scored 20 points on offense all season. Like, when is the time to bench the guy? Deshaun Watson has, he's shown nothing in the three years he's been at Cleveland. Granted, he got hurt last year. He and was, he got suspended, he was suspended for 11 games. He was suspended the one year. But in his first full season, how long do you keep him in until you're like, wait a second, we were a playoff team last year with Joe Flacco and how great our defense yeah, was. Yeah, right. I was going to bring that up. And too. then we didn't yeah. offer him a contract. And now all of a sudden yeah, it we're. It doesn't make sense. No, I'm sticking with Deshaun Watson. Like, why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> what has he done? He's done nothing. Now you trade Amari Cooper. What is the Browns' offense looking like? Nothing. Put in DTR. I want to see something new. I want to J- see something James different. Winston. James, James Winston. James Winston. I saw. There. I saw a rumor that James might start, but no. Stefanski's like Deshaun Watson. I think. Our I think. Guy. I think they should give James an opportunity. I mean, it can't, he can't look worse than Deshaun Watson. And I think Deshaun Watson, he's got, he's got too much riding on one season where he made it to the AFC Divisional, almost beat the Chiefs. He threw huh. for like 300 <laughs> yards or whatever. Bill he, O'Brien. You he's gotta, got that one year that he's that riding up. on that gave him that whole contract. I'm sorry, I had to bring it up. Because <laughs> you, you, can't talk, you can't talk about Deshaun Watson and not bring up his track record. Fair enough. And what he did that one year, that is what gave him all this money. And by the it's, way, Cleveland <laughs> is a terrible organization. They continue to make bad decisions. 
just all around. I mean, I don't even know why they would Dude, go get Desha- Amari Cooper if you're going to go trade him anyways. Listen, Deshaun Watson was this close to going to Atlanta until the Browns gave him a fully guaranteed contract. So what would that look like? Deshaun Watson on the Browns with no Kirk or the, the Falcons with no Kirk Cousins because that was yeah, but the, like the Falcons would be in shame. Oh my gosh, that'd be terrible. It, 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 they're talking about Kyle Pitts being bad. Oh and, my oh, man, gosh, that ain't going to be. Well, like, I don't know if it was just a situation for Houston, like the offense, the way Bill O'Brien was. It was with, weird, too, because the way, why didn't you guys left, try to keep him? Because, why didn't you? Well, he didn't want to be in, in Houston. He, what was the he, reason for that, though? He literally said, I don't want to be in Houston, get me out. After we lost and we went 4-13 and 13 or 4-12, and 12, J.J. Watt was like, I'll see you later. I'm retiring. Or he went <laughs> He went to the Cardinals. Because the, he was hoping Deshaun time, was going to be the guy. Right. right. The last time they walked out the field, you could see he was visibly frustrated. And at the time... I was a little bit annoyed with the fact that we were losing it. Then all this crazy stuff comes out in the offseason about what he's doing off the field. And it's like, I understand how great of a football player he is, but how long until he's out of the league? He is not a starting quarterback in the league anymore. He is not. And that's what the NFL was trying to do because they, they were like, oh, Deshaun Watson, you know, he's box office, you know, right. the name or whatever, you know, it, it would all be the different. things he's done in college and things like that. You it know? would be different if he came back from the suspension and played like an MVP and he quarterback. Out. He, but he's or not. Even if he played half decent and was a mid quarterback and was an eight and nine team because it was his first year with the Browns or whatever. Who's the worst? Is he the worst quarterback in the NFL, Deshaun Watson? I would say it, it's either him or. Maybe the fact that the Dolphins don't have a starting quarterback right now, you can argue Tyler Huntley, but I'd probably take Tyler Huntley over Deshaun Watson. Like, I would say there's more than 32 starters. I would say there's there's more than 32 quarterbacks better than how Deshaun Watson's playing on the Browns right now. So you're taking Daniel Jones over oh, yeah. him? Oh, yeah. Man. Daniel Jones is not good, but, man, is... Would I rather have that than, than okay, Deshaun Okay, let's Watson. do... Let's do... Before we, before we wrap up the pod, I do... I let's like do this. Let's do rapid fire... Who would you rather have? Quarterbacks. Okay. We can go back and forth. You can give me two guys, and then I'll okay. give you two guys. I'll go. I'll go first. I'll give you two quarterbacks. Oh, this is tough. <laughs> who Who would you rather have on your team right now? Daniel Jones or Dak Prescott? Oh, I'd have to say Dak. As As bad as the Cowboys are, he's still better than Daniel Jones. I know you're gonna say it. <laughs> I know you're gonna say it. Daniel Jones had a better quarterback no. rating than he did this past week. He did. The, no, he he's did. Not, he did though. Like, uh, <laughs> I, I was one of those believers because Daniel Jones had the numbers to play well. But when you look at how the Giants play, it's five yard pass after five yard pass <laughs> after five yard pass not, after five not, yard. Not with Malik Neighbors though. After not, five yard not, pass, not with Malik Neighbors. <laughs> right, but like you don't, you don't have to be a good quarterback to throw the ball to Malik Neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> like you don't. I don't. Know. But it, it definitely helps. Yes. Okay. Get your turn. I will say, I will go back to Deshaun Watson or Will Levis. That's hard. I know. That's it. really hard. Because they both shouldn't be starting um, right now. <laughs> I'm going to go Will Levis just because he's younger and he's That's got a little more upside. Because Deshaun Watson's a little more established right now. Will Levis, he's only played one year. So, like, uh, I think just, he, I'll take Will Levis. I just think it's laughable how the two games that the Tennessee <laughs> Titans have been leading in. Will Levis has thrown for under 100 yards when they were be- they were beating the Bears badly and, and stupid that- stupid interceptions stupid <laughs> they that were- just cost them the game like <laughs> every time like-, like he's flinging the one against the I Bears week it. one he like he like flinged it he didn't even need to throw it he could have just taken that- this he could have just he could have just went to the ground but he decided to I fling just- it out. Like I look at the Titans on paper, that offense with oh, what will love, what will love, what will will love us do with now Tony Pollard, Calvin Ridley, Traylon Burks, DeAndre Hopkins, DeAndre Hopkins. and then they look <laughs> like that, and I'm like, what? <laughs> I thought they would be better, honestly. I, I, I was a little high on the Titans this year. I, I thought they could be like second, third place in the AFC South, but they're so not for me, like the that. AFC South was Texans, Colts, and Jaguars. I don't know why I said that, but they had the same record. And I thought the Titans would be last, but I thought they'd have like six, seven wins. I thought they'd be decent. And now look at the offense. It's terrible. They can't even throw for 100 yards in a game. Put Mason Rudolph in. Put, put just James. Ma- Mason Rudolph is Put James Winston in. Okay. Put Tommy DeVito in. I want, let's see something new and different. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I am a little disappointed in the Titans, but very that's, much. That's a different. Should we do one more rapid fire? Or should let's we do end it, it here? Let's do it. Okay, let's do one more rapid fire for you guys. Okay, I'm going to give you Josh Allen 
or Jaden Daniels? Oh, you got to throw that at me before the show <laughs> ends. Right now, Josh Allen, just because of what he's done with nobody. Like, obviously, Josh Allen's been a top receiver, top receiver, top quarterback forever. Um, Jaden Daniels' first year, I love the recency bias. He's actually playing great. But I feel like if you say Jaden Daniels, Jalen Hurts, I would take Jaden Daniels. You take like, Jalen Hurts over Jaden Daniels. Is that what you said? Jalen Hurts? Daniels. I don't know if I said Okay. I, I was just making I sure. I might have said the wrong okay. thing. Like, yeah. Jaden Daniels over <laughs> Jalen Hurts, yes. Okay, okay, um, okay, okay. <laughs> but yeah, I love Josh Allen. I feel like there's no reason to say that. I think it, it took a little closer than people think. But I think Daniels is borderline top 10, and he's only going to get better and better as the season goes okay. on. And right now, the MVP debate for me is between Sam Darnold and Jalen Jaden Daniels. There's no there's no other guy that can be Mahomes is first. I'm like, what the heck, man? <laughs> okay. All right. You got, what your turn. One more. Last one. One more. Last one. All right. Let's do uh who would you rather have right now? Jordan Love or Jaden Daniels? <sighs> I'm going to go Jaden Daniels. That's so tough, man. I'm going to go Jaden Daniels. I, I think he's smarter with the football. I love it. I think Jordan Love <laughs> is a little out of control sometimes, even though he makes spectacular plays happen. I mean, there were a couple touchdowns he had against the Cardinals that I, don't, I think should have been He was intercept. a little sloppy. Against little sloppy. any other defense, that would have been an interception. Did you see the pick that he threw the other week where he was falling down in the end zone? And yeah, that was... Okay, that right there <laughs> was... Horrible. I mean, he should have just taken the safety at that point. He was already screwed, and then he just flinged it (laughs) out. I'm like, bro, in my opinion, I think Jane Daniels is a little more conservative. Now, is he aggressive throwing the ball down the field? Yes, both of these guys are. But I think I trust Jane Daniels to make right decisions when it comes to taking care of the football. For Jordan Love, no, I don't trust him taking care of the ball. We saw it in the playoffs last year against San Francisco where he was on his back foot making those same throws or he's either running across the field trying to throw a cross body. He's trying to be Aaron Rodgers. I mean, just be Jordan Love. I mean, that's who you are. You're not Aaron Rodgers. And they're all, and all these commentators are glazing him <laughs> going, oh, he looks like Aaron Rodgers there. That uh, like- okay. <laughs> that, what does that mean? That, that He's not being himself. Like, he's going to make something bad happen there. It just... Uh. Like, we've seen Aaron Rodgers. He's trying to do too much. I, I just think that's the problem I have with Jordan Love. Now, is he a top 10 quarterback? Yes. But he needs to clean it up. He needs to. That's a heck of a play by Mahomes there, is all I hear from <laughs> Or um, Tony Romo. <laughs> wow. Romo, literally. Wow, what a play. <laughs> literally in the Ravens-Commanders game, he's like, that looked a little bit like Patrick Mahomes. Well, Mom, I like, I, like, why do you have to see it? <laughs> like, is, that, is that just because you didn't win a Super Bowl? Well, what does Patrick like? Mahomes have to do with the Ravens playing? It's because Tony <laughs> Romo's mad that he wasn't Patrick Mahomes. He wished he was because he fumbled all those uh, kicks know, like, and he had all that stuff. I like that him. take. Maybe that's why he talks about him so much. I yeah. don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, he, the glazing will never stop. I, I still can't get over the fact that there was like 50 penalties in the game last night, but that's that's it. I gotta get it. But all right, man. Well, I think this is going to do it for the pod. Um, Mike Zanetti is joining me, a Texan, Texans fan. His team's looking really good, better than my, my Cowboys, <laughs> dude. I mean, Just got to clean it up on defense. That's it. We need to clean it up everywhere. <laughs> we need to clean up Jerry Gerald. Wipe it clean. And Jerry, stop talking to Roger Penske about a racetrack. Focus on the football team. But um, this is Mike Zanetti joining us on the Take Podcast. I'm your host, Jackson Burleson. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and also share this episode with anybody who messes with NFL or football. The No Fun League. Let's go. This has been another episode of The Take. I'm Jackson Burleson, and we'll see you guys next week. Peace. Yeah. Talk to me, baby. Talk to me, talk to me, talk to me nice. I'm from another world, baby, yeah. Right away paradise. They think I'm way too cold, cause I put my